Greetings all and welcome to Yarnspirations.com. In this video I want to go over some quick tips on how to install a zipper into your knitted or crocheted garment. Now, the reason that installing a zipper is a little harder than it might be is because knitted fabric has some elasticity in it, as does crocheted fabric. I'm using the terms interchangeably here today. Uh, but woven fabric on a zipper does not. So when you're putting the zipper in, you need to make sure that the fabric of the knitting is neither bunched up nor stretched out, because if it's bunched up, the zipper area will hang shorter in the front than it should. And if it is stretched out, then the zipper will ruffle when it's zipped. It won't lay flat. So one of the ways to avoid this problem is to block the garment first. Now, my particular garment that I'm working on is all sewn up together, but if you are making a piece from scratch, you can put the zipper in just working with the two fronts, so you can actually install the zipper before you sew the whole garment together, if that's what you would like to do. Sometimes it's a little easier to finagle with. When you're picking your zipper out at the store, you may not always find a zipper that is the exact length that you need. In that case, longer, is always better than shorter. We can always take some extra inches off the top of the zipper, but if it's too short, it's too short and it's not your best choice. After you've got it blocked, the first thing you want to do is pin the zipper into place. You want to start at the bottom and work up because once again, if I have to adjust the length of the zipper, I can do it at the top. It's much easier to do at the top than the bottom. So begin pinning at the bottom Make sure the zipper tab is facing up and start pinning at the bottom. You want the edge of the fabric to meet. Essentially what you want it to do is meet the other side of the fabric, but you don't want a ton of overlap and you don't want so much extra knitted fabric in here that the, uh, the fibers will get caught in the teeth. So lay down one side first and pin it as you go and pin all the way up to the top. Once again, I want it to hit the middle, but I don't really want any overlap. And I want to make sure that the sweater fabric is laying flat and that I am neither pulling too tight nor scrunching up the knitted fabric. I'm going to go ahead and pin that all the way up to the top. Now you can see I have some extra zipper at the top. I'm not going to deal with it yet. I will trim some of that away later on, but I don't want to mess with it until I'm 100% sure that that zipper's laying exactly where I want it to. So I'm just going to leave that flapping in the breeze for right now. Now I have to pin the other side. Once again, I'm going to work from the bottom and I'm going to make sure everything lays flat, but I also need to make sure that the design elements line up across from each other. So here I have where the gray and the blue change colors and here I have where the gray and the blue change colors so I know that those have to line up exactly across from each other. So that will help me pin the second side into place because not only am I again trying to carefully lay the zipper against the knitted fabric so that it is neither stretched out nor bunching but I also want to make sure it lines up across. I want to make sure that the fabrics meet in the middle, the knitted fabrics meet in the middle with no overlap, because an overlap, once again, is going to get caught in the teeth. But when I'm standing there in my sweater, I want to make sure that that zipper is covered. So once again, I'm going to make sure these stitches are across from each other, and I'm going to pin the second side from the bottom up. Now once I get all that pinned, the next thing I'm going to do is baste, and basting means you are using a needle and thread 
to put some stitches in that are not going to stay. Now, many people will tell you you do not need to baste. Here is why I suggest that you do. All the time and effort you put into making this zipper lay flat from the get-go is time and effort you will not have to spend fixing it if it doesn't work the way you want it to. It's much like woodworking where they say measure twice, cut once. The more time you spend preparing the zipper, the more likely it is that you only have to insert the zipper one time. So after you've got it all pinned all the way up, now this is a separating zipper because it's a jacket, I'm gonna go ahead and split the two and I'm going to baste. So I have a needle and I have a contrasting color of thread. When I sew the zipper in, I'm gonna use the gray because I want it to disappear. But for basting, I want to be able to see it so I can cut it out. And I'm just going to do a big honking running stitch. When I have finished this basting on both sides, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to try the sweater on without the pins. With the basting, we'll hold everything together. And if I have to make any adjustments, now is the time to do it. I might have to cut the basting out and rearrange a couple stitches. But once again, if you are happy with it when it's basted, then you know that you will be happy with it when it is sewn. So go ahead and baste both sides. Try it on. If it's not for you, if it's for somebody else, put it on a hanger, put it on a mannequin, have your next door neighbor put it on. Bodies are not straight up and down flat. So you want to make sure it looks good on the person, not just on the table. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish my basting and then I'm gonna come back. We're going to talk about how to do the actual stitching. You can see where I have my basting stitches and they're not particularly neat and I don't particularly care because I'm gonna cut them out once I have decided that the zipper is laying exactly the way I want it to. So now I'm going to go ahead and do my actual stitching. I'm going to uh, use two strands of thread. So one strand of thread through the needle, but sew with the thread double. And I'm gonna have a knot at the bottom and I'm going to start going down through the tab of the zipper because that will hide the knot. Now I want to put extra, extra, extra stitches at the bottom because this is an area where the uh, the garment gets a lot of wear. So because it's plastic coated it's a little difficult to sew in. So I'm going to go ahead and put my extra stitches over here on the side where I can get the needle through and I'm going to put many 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 stitches because we need the bottoms of the zipper to stay tight. And I'm just catching the stitches on the back. It's not going through to the front, so none of these stitches are going to show. Now I'm going to back stitch the zipper into place, so I'm going to work from the front. So I'm going to put my needle through. Now, and you can see that I'm using a coordinating color of thread so that it disappears. So I'm working in this little gulch between these two garter stitch ridges. We, in the sewing trade, we call that stitching in the ditch. You find the area that is the lowest and you stitch in there because your eye doesn't see it. Don't worry if you stitch over the basting thread, you're gonna pull it out later. So go back a little bit and then move your needle to the front. So I'm scooping and pull it through and then I'm going back over a strand of yarn and then putting it forward. This is a back stitch. The closer your back stitches are together, the more durable this is going to be. And I'm trying not to split the plies of the yarn because I don't want it to look fuzzy. But again, if you split a little bit here and there, it's not a particularly terrible thing. So back over a strand of yarn, a little bit forward back over a strand of yarn and a little bit forward. See what that looks like on the back. 
you can see the gray strands coming up. Well, it's a little hard to see, but you can see that they are in there. So I would go ahead, I would back stitch all the way up to the top, and I would put some extra stitches at the top in the same way I did at the bottom because the top of the zipper is also someplace where uh, durability is an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then the last thing I want to talk about is how to address that extra fabric at the top of the zipper. One tip I neglected to mention is you want to make sure that you are not putting your thread so close to the teeth of the zipper that it could get caught. So another good trick to do as you're stitching up the sides, uh, go ahead and run the tab back and forth where you've stitched to make sure that nothing is in the way. So once you get this side done, then you'll go ahead and do the other side and you can join the zipper at the bottom, run the tab up and down a couple of times to make sure once again that there's no stitching in the way of the action of the zipper. All right, my sewing is done. I have gone in with a seam ripper or a sharp pair of snips and trimmed all the basting threads out. Make sure to pick them out. And so now the last thing I have to do is address this extra fabric at the top. The first thing you wanna do is pull the zipper tab down so that is below the area where you want the zipper to end. The next thing you need to do is fold each side back separately at a slight angle. And then you're going to tack that into place. It can go in a 90 degree angle like I had it, or you can move it down in that direction. But I like this because it keeps the, it helps stop the zipper stop. So I'm gonna tack all this down. Now, what do I do with the rest of this? I'm gonna cut it off, but remember, don't cut anything until your sewing is finished, you've tried the garment on or hung it on a neighbor or a friend or a mannequin and made sure that the zipper is perfectly flat because once you have cut it, there's not a lot of wiggle room. I like to use pinking shears because that gives me a serrated edge and it frays less frequently but you could also cut it straight across with a sharp straight edge scissor and then use your leftover gray thread to just sort of whip stitch over the edge while you're tacking the zipper down. So once again, it can go this way or it can go this way. But what you need to do is to make sure that when you pull the zipper up, it stops. You don't wanna pull the tab right off the zipper and then the zipper is useless. So that's all you need to know to put a zipper in a garment. Thanks so much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you again soon.